Reverend Father and venerable religious, and dear parishioners, and dear visitors and guests, when we look at our infinitely lovable infant in the manger, we realize very deeply some things. And the more we meditate, the more we realize this infinitely lovable baby came to suffer. He came to die. And he came to serve. And these are reasons that should give us all the more or should inflame us all the more with love for him. Because when we reflect upon these words, he came to suffer, to die, and to serve, it was not just for all mankind in general. It was also individual. He came to suffer for me. He came to die for me. 33 years hence, and he came to serve. I would like to especially reflect upon that third word, his service. He came to serve. Mind you, this is Almighty God himself, to whom all service, all adoration, all worship, everything is to be given. And yet, we will see in his life, in his public ministry, and especially very powerfully expressed the night before he died, his service. Remember at the Last Supper, how among the many wonderful things that happened, and of course the greatest was that he gave his own body and blood as our spiritual food and drink and Holy Communion. But remember, he puts on the towel and he washes the feet of the apostles. And St. Peter is so overcome with that. He says, Lord, you won't do this to me. He was overcome by the fact that Jesus was serving him. This was a great mark of honor that a host would pay to his guests by washing their feet. And remember, those were some pretty dirty roadways back then, nothing like the paved roads we have today. And Jesus, after he finishes washing the feet of all of them, including Judas, he says, you call me Master and Lord, and you do well. But as I have washed your feet, so wash the feet of one another. He truly came to serve. He was teaching this, teaching us how to do that. And he's not diminishing his own infinite dignity, but he's saying that I as God, I as your Lord in my human nature can provide for you, can serve you. So our Lord was introducing a, a new idea, a new principle of governance that if one is in authority, one also needs to exercise that authority as an act of service. Not only does it have to be an act of service, but wielding authority, and, and many, almost everyone, will be called to some degree of authority in their lifetime. And of course, parents have authority over their children. But there's something else besides the idea of service that goes along with authority. Our Lord also said to wield one's authority or one's influence in love, in charity. And we know what happened that St. Peter had denied our Lord during his passion, and before Jesus would make him pope, he wanted him to say three times, 
Lord, I love thee. He would not allow him to serve as his vicar when he would shortly be ascending into heaven, he would not let him assume that authority without first saying, Lord, I love thee. Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. What a powerful lesson for us. But how does Jesus show us this service when he is a helpless baby? In the stable. We know babies are completely helpless. They can't serve anybody. How is Jesus serving us? Not just in his public ministry, but even at the very beginning of his human existence, his human visible existence. Well, remember that he, as Almighty God, knows what's going on, even though he doesn't seem to have a developed intellect, which babies don't have. He is God, so he does have that functioning intellect, and of course, with the divine intelligence there. So already that choice to be born in here on earth, that was his saying, I am here to serve you. But there's something else that teaches us this. Look at the stable. What is a stable? What does it represent? I would wager to say that a stable represents service. What's kept in a stable? What's kept in a barn? Animals. And they exist to serve the legitimate needs of human beings. Food, grain, crops are stored in a stable, stored in a barn. So by being born in a stable, Jesus is already saying, in a very powerful, symbolic way that he has come to teach us how to serve. The stable exists for the home. It's not the home that exists for the stable. So we see more and more God's beautiful plan. We see the humility of Christ. And above all, we see his love, that he was willing to do this for us. We will have many opportunities for service in our lives, doing the spiritual works of mercy, doing, doing the corporal works of mercy. Remember to do so wholeheartedly. Remember to exercise authority to that extent to which you are called in love and service, and know that you will be imitating him who came to serve, not losing anything of his infinite dignity. His holy mother and St. Joseph doing the menial tasks of daily life, they are also teaching us this wonderful lesson. So Jesus is teaching us, even on Christmas, to serve one another Appreciate those opportunities that you have. And again, you will be practicing those works that he himself did and which he taught us to do. May your lives be inspired to, of course, not just a service and love of your neighbor, but most of all, a service and love of him, he who is our Lord and God, on whom we wish to behold one day in his eternal glory. A merry and blessed Christmas to all of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.